that is uh, appears not to uh, appears not to be an end in sight as far as that issue is concerned. One would have thought that would have put it to rest last week. Unfortunately, it continues. Now, um, let's hear from John Jinapo, and this is also an area that uh, should be a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, why is the minority insisting that some wrong has been done, which wrong you now seek to implicate the president, and you say <clears throat> that it clearly betrays his alleged lack of, you know, commitment to real commitment to fighting corruption. Uh, thank you, thank you, Samson. Um, to begin with, le let me give you a very interesting quote, and it sounds like an irony, but for me, it sums up the whole thing. Mm. There's nothing more deceptive than an obvious fact. There's nothing more deceptive than an obvious fact. It sounds like an irony, but <coughs> it, it summarizes whatever I want to say. First of all, this is a very serious matter. If you take Ghana's daily consumption of petrol, on the average, it's about 4.5 million liters. And so for a whooping 5 million liters to be contaminated, either through negligence, uh, deliberately, or whatever you choose to describe it, and the way and manner in which those products were sold, it clearly gives cause for worry. And what the minority was doing was only to do what was right, was only to do what is appropriate, to, to do what is proper. And if you listen to our first press conference, we brought out issues that we thought that ought to be investigated. Because it's only through investigation, proper investigation, credible investigation that we can get to the bottom of this matter. All what has happened, and I share in most of the points Abdul Malik makes, it's a facade. There's nothing better share it. It's just an attempt to whitewash the issue. <laughs> and clearly, when we refer to other organizations, entities, and personalities, it is not about double standard. We refer to comments by the MPP members themselves. And so if we refer to comments about, from Occupy Ghana, from ASAP, from Abdul Imani Malik, Ghana. from Imani Ghana, and from all those people, assuming without admitting that some members of the NDC branded them as pro-NPP. That is even why we must point out, assuming that you, Samson, I brand you <coughs> as pro-NPP and you criticize MPP, that gives cause. Because my duty on the minority side is to put government on its toes. And so when you cite me, or when I criticize you, it's only fair, it's only proper, it's only to be expected. But when somebody who is perceived to be a defendant of the MPP criticizes the MPP, it makes a lot of uh, news. I and think let's go to the substance weight. and let's, let's so not have a debate let's, about let's this. Not but you see, the, the politicians, the politicians, and particularly those who prefer to tack people rather than uh, watch and pay attention to the substance of what they deal with, it's, it's ugly. You don't want I, us to I, I agree that. with yeah. you that, look, we ought to deal with the substance. And so let's stay with the substance. And so this issue that people try to throw in, I just thought that I should clear that. What are the issues that on the 18th of, June, of January, just briefly, because we've gone through a lot of the things, I really don't want to rehash them. The question is where we are now, what do we do? There was so-called contaminated fuel, the MD decided to dispose it of. And clearly, based on the facts available, the MD and BOST did not follow due process. They did not do the right thing. You cannot explain it out. You cannot equalize, you cannot justify it by any stretch of imagination. The first thing is that if Dr. Akwete is not a medical doctor, he cannot go to Kolebu to operate. Simplicity. If it enters through the premise of Kolebu and begins to operate based on the assumption that Kwakubako or Samson or myself ever operated in Kolebu without a license, that cannot be justified. You are debasing the issues. And I thought that having gone through the democratic dispensation to this level, we cannot bend back and begin to justify present actions 
by the wrongdoings of the past, assuming it even happened. And I have issues with that. But I think that that is not even the issue on the table. That is why we are a democratic state. That is why we are building institutions. We must begin to set certain standards and not begin to debase these issues. I commended the minister when he set up that committee. And look at the composition of the committee. The Standards Board, Energy Commission, TOR, BOST, NPA, uh, Bulk Oil Producers, I mean, BNI itself. You couldn't have put together any better committee than what he did. And so some of us had to commend him. The only point of departure was that let the MD step aside so that we can have that free hand to investigate. And later on, when we asked for timelines, we got clarification that the minister had given 30 days. We thought that was sufficient. So the MPA will bring its perspective. Boss itself, which was completed, was sitting on the committee. <laughs> so this issue of some people made statements here and there, for me, was neither here nor there. Because I believe that the committee would have done a good job. The MPA initially came out with a statement, and it's clearly explained that, so I don't need to belabor that point. So all of us were waiting for the committee's report. And as a minister, normally you wait for the committee's report because they will then generate a document, a well-informed document. You will study it, accept some portions, accept it in whole, or even reject it, and determine the way forward. The issue about whether the fuel is landed in the market, the issue about whether BOST lied about 100,000, and MPA contradicted them with 472,000. The issue about whether Movimpina is a, is a duly registered company. The issue about whether Movimpina, when they put in the application on the 19th of May, was registered. The issue about whether it's a limited liability company or was sole proprietorship. All these issues would have come to the fore. All these issues would have been dealt with properly. So they will have the full facts. He set up a committee. You are saying you were, wait, you were hoping that he will wait for the committee to finish its work before he came back to say anything. What? He set up the committee, waiting for the committee to do its work. And you were all over the place, making the matters worse. And he has information, reports, investigative reports, that give contrary information. And that seeks to, you know, as it were, expose some of what you were putting out, and you say he should hold it. He shouldn't come forward and put it out. The minister was not under compulsion to set up that committee. We did not compel him to put up that committee. The minister felt that that was the best approach based on what the minister said. And so that's an established fact. Two, when a major issue like this happened, there was normally a meeting between the various ministries that are related or stakeholders or have issues to do with this. And I would have expected that the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Energy, the Minister of Interior, the National Security Minister would have had a meeting immediately to deliberate on this. That is proper governance. You don't know if they did. If they did, the minister wouldn't have set up that committee because based on that committee, it presupposes that the minister was not aware the VNI were investigating. And look at the timelines between when the minister announced the setting up of this committee and the so-called report that the BNI generated. What the BNI simply did was to set their own questions and answer them. The issue of the contamination happened before the boss MD was appointed. Who said so? Who said so? And so if you come and say that, look, contrary to the allegation that the contamination happened under the watch of the boss MD, based on that he's cleared, it's false. And this is what I call a fallacy of hasty generalization. Simply setting your own questions and beginning to answer them. And that is why all these issues are lingering. Has this issue been resolved? An objective, fair-minded person, you are sincere a sincere that person. That this was not the initial perception that you sought to create. That this regime created a contamination to benefit, <laughs> to benefit from. There is a fact that the contamination happened under this regime. That's incontrovertible. Following that, no, when I say regime, opinion. I'm referring to uh, Alfred Obin He, he was regime. not in the office. We've been in that office before. We've been ministers before. So we understand what we are talking about. We knew that on the 18th of January, he hadn't been appointed. 
And so these are facts. You can have op opinions and say that, look, based on the fact that boss said they released only 100,000, and it turned out that MPA contradicted them by stating that it was rather 470, the extra 300 is found its way into the market. And as Abdul Malik said, it's just an opinion. Because you are piecing pieces together and forming some conclusions. You are making a fair deduction. And once you cannot trust the MPA, once you cannot trust the state institutions, it creates a major problem. And as it stands, I am convinced that that committee's work has come to naught. I'm convinced that that committee's work is in a state of comatose and that they will not proceed to do anything again. Because the minister is past judgment. The minister is past judgment. That look, the MD, the man at the helm of affairs, is not culpable. He has nothing to answer. So what is the committee going to do? And he's even gone further to set up another committee chaired by, I think, Dr. Dakwa. No? It I, is the chairmanship that has changed. Yeah. That's my understanding. No look, listen. Yes. If you listen to him, the, the, the setting up of Mr. Dr. Dakwa's committee and what they are supposed to do has nothing to do with determining whether somebody is culpable or not. So the terms have changed. The terms have changed. And the chairman, there's now a chairman. But the committee has not been disbanded. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the initial committee, the minister set up to investigate. So this is a one-man committee, is that what you're suggesting? No, no, no. It, because it he didn't name be new persons who were supposed he to be didn't name member, or new We don't even know the membership of the committee. He didn't, you, he, didn't name, he didn't name new institutions to work with uh, Dr. Dakwa. And he did not also say that the old institutions will work with Dr. Dakwa. He did not say that. So, so your understanding just, is that there's a one-man committee? No, no. What I'm saying is that the old committee that he set to investigate this matter and determine all the issues, as far as I'm concerned, is moot. And that is of no essence again. And if you listen to what the minister said, I, I have it here. Mm, quickly do that. And, and earlier I had read a statement, um, the, the part of the statement of the, of part of the letter to, to the president, and you remember there was this portion that suggested that the, that the, the, the PRO, the PRO of BOST, appears to have suggested, or not really suggested, but to have said <laughs> that the, the products were, were going, or that the product had been sold to some steel factories, had been sold to some steel factories. That's the claim in the letter. Well, um, the, the contrary information is that the PRO actually, and she's confirming this, that Kojo Yang Singh asked her a question. <coughs> and the question was whether, um, let me just get this clear. Who was, would, who who would Zoop Oil sell, sell the off-pack product to? That was a question from Kojo Yang Singh. And then her reply or explanation was that the, she gave example of who the product may go to, and that's such as the steel companies buying to propel machines, garment factories for their production, contractors for asphalt, etc., and not that they had sold the off-spec to uh, to, to, to those already or that they were going to sell them to people. Thank you very let me, much. Let me read that, that portion. The insurance was saying in the letter to the president. That is so. We'll have to verify the, mm. the two. Uh, listen to what the minister says. The minister, however, expressed worry over the yearly <coughs> case of contaminated fuel and has, as a result, after he expressed the worry, Following that, or consequent to that, set up a committee led by Dr. Lawrence Dakwa, head of chemical engineering at KNUST, to review operations of BOST in a bid to prevent future contamination. And so the essence of this committee is simply to review the operational systems and prevent further contamination. So the scope of this so-called committee, whether old or new, it's limited to preventing future contamination. That's the essence of his committee. And it's clear and obvious from what the minister says. 
If you listen to what he said previously, setting up that eight-member committee, the scope was brought, and he made it known to us. And so clearly, there's a shift in position. Look, Samson, we can attempt to Is do it. Is it not easy to understand? Some of the issues have been resolved. As far as I'm That's concerned, why the not was even one issue. In the statement, taking the BNI things, mm -hmm. he was suggesting that this are now excluded. Yes. Now going forward, and those, this thing, this review, it's even in the first terms of reference. That's so. Still there. Okay. Uh, yeah. But the point is that I think the BNI thing should be considered as just a small package in what the company Like A suggested, and take all of those BNI MPA yeah. and use them if yeah. you want, but you are not bound. Thank you. Is it clearly, from what the minister said, there's an attempt to close this case? No, you cannot close. There is an attempt to close this case, but as Abdul Mali said, this case will never close the way the minister wants it closed, it won't happen. Look, we are talking of fuel. You and I go to the filling station to buy fuel. You want to be assured that the fuel you are buying is of high quality and is of spec. And we've had that assurance. I don't think so. I don't think that the ordinary consumer you don't listen, believe listening their, you don't to don't believe the assurance. I don't believe that the ordinary consumer following the trajectory, From the following these events has confidence in the system any longer. The MPA's assurance that there's no At all, because the same MPA that claims that something was wrong and even proceeded to assure Ghanaians that it was going to take punitive action against the state actors. The minister claimed that the BNI worked with them Koku and asked, cleared them. Koku has asked some very simple the questions, question. but which are very critical. If the, the product is out there in the market, definitely the results will become obvious. You no. will buy, you will buy, you will use, no. you will damage your engine. No, no, that's not the case at all. You could buy an off-spec fuel, it won't damage your engine, but over a long term, it will have an effect on but your But those vehicle. who claim that theirs have been denied, you see, can't they give us the evidence? Okay. Okay. Now. Thank you. Please, please, if Thank I may, you. If I may with no, your permission, no, no, please, you. just to land, just to land, I, I, please. You see, what we want is assurance. What we want is confidence in the system. And as you said, we ought to have further investigation in this matter. And the only way to resolve this, in my opinion, is to have a parliamentary inquiry into this matter. Okay. As Thank far you. as government is mm. concerned, mm. Not even well, one yeah. shred of trust there might be do we have in that. Okay, thank you. Parliament there yes, shouldn't sir. be a yes. statement. Yes. 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 If yes. we really want to go into the matter thank and you. deal with it, thank there you. shouldn't be a Parliament statement. Has a Parliamentary, Parliamentary of inquiry. Of let's, 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 let's hear from Alex. Yes. Something. Yes. Yes. You see, when you have a desperate opposition party and then a minority would not take a time, to act with consistency and check its facts. Such is the result, confusion. Now, let me deal with the issues one after the other. The minority's first position was to the effect that the, tour, uh, the boss MD was involved in certain corrupt practices, i.e., he has supervised the contamination of uh, fuel. So Please, can I, um, tell you, you I just kept you quiet. Are the host. You. At least we can't allow Afenyo to make these comments when they are not true. When we never said so, please, I respect, please watch with me. you. Please watch me. Okay. Mm. I, I indicated to you that you may not have said so, but you gave that impression. I mean, no. I so kept quiet. Uh, yes, you it's know, okay. You hold on, hold on. It, 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 it ought to I be, allowed you to, to be fair. Right. When we did you not see, say You that. see, in the manner <laughs> I said it, that is my value judgment. That's my opinion. Okay. Right. Go ahead. The minority held a press conference and created the impression to the whole world that the bust MD has supervised contamination of fuel and has sold same to his cronies and he has benefited from same. This was the allegation. Now let us go into that. The BNI report has established that indeed the man had nothing to do with those who purchased the fuel, the off-spec product. Indeed, it happened before he assumed office. That is also a fact. Then the minority again says that, yes, the MPA has come out with a public state, uh, a statement that, look, 
they even needed the buyer of the offspeck, needed a license. So now let's go into the law. Act 691. I have turned all the pages of that law. I want the minority to tell me where it is clearly stated that you section need section eleven where the on. MPA itself oh, referred I, I, all of I us would, to. I would I would I would I would go to it. Mm. I'll go to it. Right. If you look at section eleven, all the categories, mm. the type of activities are listed. Mm. Now if you come to section eleven three, right, it says that the NPA would have to come out with a legislative instrument to, to cover expand. other exactly. Now, if you go further to read sections 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28, the category of licenses are listed. Please, I would want to quote again, don't let us create an artificial forest <laughs> to hide some sick trees. Angu, is that it? I hear you. <laughs> for, for the benefit of no. our, our viewers and listeners, this is section 11. Yes. Uh -huh. Requirement for license. Yes. A person shall not engage in a business or commercial activity in the downstream industry unless that person has been granted a license for that purpose by the board. Go further. The categories are now the, the type says, of license, yes. The business or commercial activities of the downstream industry yeah. in respect of crude oil, yes. <coughs> gasoline, yes. diesel, yes. liquefied petroleum gas, yes. kerosene, and other designated petroleum products are importation, exportation, re-exportation, shipment, transportation, processing, refining, storage, distribution, marketing, and, and sale. sale. And the three. And the three says the authority may. Me. Yes, That's may, me. Legis may no, no, read it. Go, go. The authority may, so, may buy so, a legislative yes. instrument, limit or expand the scope of As, activities under this section. Exactly. Under this section. exactly. Now, have, have some patience. Have please, some patience. Please. Have some patience. <laughs> go on. Now, if you go to section 24, it tells you which category of license is given. 25, it gives you the various. So the 20, from 24 to 26, 8, the law now explains what category of licenses that are envisaged. There is nothing there for the the offspect in the contaminated product we are talking about that there is a requirement for a license. So why did the minister prohibit that henceforth, if you do not have a license, you will not be able to procure? I am telling you that. I am telling you that this is the law. I am telling you what the law says. And I've gone further to tell you that 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 states clearly which type of licenses are to be granted. <clears throat> All right? So, let's get it clear from there. I am to, I'm quoting the law. I am relying on the law to say that if there, somebody says that, those contam that the contaminated product, before you purchase, you need a license, mm. same cannot be found in the law. And I want anybody <laughs> to prove me wrong. Uh, now, hold on. Hold on. Uh, maybe this is a road with, with some sense permission, mm. if I'm allowed. I stumbled on this thing. It's a sample license mm. uh, issued by MPA. It says license number 312, so and so and so, 2014. Uh, I read, in exercise of powers conferred by the National Petroleum Authority Act 2005, Act 691, the National Petroleum Authority hereby grants this license to the blank space that company designated. Mm -hmm which is registered to conduct business in Ghana in accordance with the company's code 1963 Act 179 under Certificate of Incorporation. The company having fully complied with Section 12 of the Act and Environmental Protection Agency legislation requirements is authorized by these licenses to operate a waste oil recycle and treatment facility. That's what Isankuma referred to. Yes, yeah. to, to collect, haul, store, process waste oils, and offer the recycled product for sale to industries throughout Ghana. So under Section 12, they provide license for companies to undertake that business. Right. 
No, I'm going to do two sections. So right. deals with the application itself. Mm. No, but I'm saying that it appears. There, there's there's no. a, a, a line in specific, no. and no. it's mentioned the waste one. Please. And that's what he's referring Please. to. And just before you continue, the, the, the letter that I referred to earlier also says that to say that there's no requirement for license is incorrect because there's a waste oil processing uh, license, yeah. waste oil processing companies. And they say, for example, uh, Glass Brown Limited and Batco Investments are duly licensed with the MPA to operate as waste oil processing companies. They have been operating for the for over three years. And this is the Samson. sample. Mm. Samson. Mm. Yeah. I believe that we want to argue within the law mm -hmm. and not outside it. Mm. And I want to say this very firmly, with all the force that I can marshal, to say that if indeed NPA has been authorizing people or issuing licenses for people for the purpose of waste products without the, an ally, then same is being done outside the law. That is my contention. Because, because if you read section 11, it spells out the type of activities that will require a license. If you read section 11.3, it tells you that, well, we are not limiting you, but you can expand through an ally. If NPA can tell me that, oh, they have an ally, which, they, which also brings in waste products, mm. then that is fine. But as we speak, there, I've checked the law. There is no such ally which has expanded the scope of section 11. Now, if you come to section 24... Th there are allies that predate the MPA Act, though. Oh, I so, am talking so about... Me, the, me, me, we are talking yes, about we, what the and law and is saying. Let's quickly. I see quickly. obligations here. Mm. Uh, I see. It says the company shall ensure that the operation of its facilities or installations for the collection, transportation, storage, processing, and sale of recycled oil is safe, reliable, and, com and complies with rules and regulations promulgated under the Act and the Petroleum Legislation 19, 1959, right. LI-206, LI-207. Okay, correct. Uh, uh, well, hold on. An enactment which provides that an LI should be brought to Parliament, okay, is as it is, and that unto that LI, which is envisaged under the enactment, is brought. You cannot rely on any pre-existing ally to fortify yourself to undertake any activity. That is, again, my contention. Is there, because is there the a requirement act, for the pre-existing ally to have been repealed? With the greatest respect, let us read 11.3 of the Act. We have read it. Go ahead. No, no, you've no. not read 11.3. Yes, 11.3. Yes, it says it can make to expand. It should. Or, it should. Or it take should. away. Exactly. That it's is may. what the law... It's may. may. It's a may. Yes. It's a may. So if you have not done that... How then do you say that? Oh, please. How then do you say that? Well, you would go ahead and line it, especially so when subsequent provisions, 24 to 28, spell out each category of license. Somebody should educate me. I agree that I consider that my understanding of the law is limited. But from what I have read, it is clear that. For MPA to engage in licensing of, uh, uh, for the purpose of recycled products and these uh, contaminated products we are talking about, same must be well rooted in the law. Mm. And I'm saying that there's no such thing. So let's put that aside and move, make progress. Having made that point, the NDC had narrowed all these things on the boss MD, that the man was corrupt and the man had sold the product to somebody close to him. Once again, that they are new style, relational uh, interests, like what they did in the, in, the, in the domestic born thing. And they started attacking the man. Now the BNI gets into the matter. BNI has the mandate to investigate criminal activities. Same mandate is given to Yoko. Same mandate is given to the police. <coughs> so now the BNI says, that, look, the man has not committed any crime. We have done the investigation, we've done the checks, and on the basis of those checks, we are able to find that indeed, the company is not related to him. In any event, the NDC had also alleged that how could you allow a sole proprietor to purchase 
the 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 the, the contaminated product. That was it also one of, their, one, one of the one of the arguments. Even if you, if if that is even the case, you look at the law. A citizen of Ghana can be given a license. If you look at the law, a citizen of Ghana under Section 11 can be given a license. So if you yourselves decided to narrow the matter on an individual, mm. and a body has come out to deal with the matter, you don't now shift and say that you suspect uh, uh, cover-up. What cover-up? Come out with what you suspect to be the cover-up. Now you again allege that due process was not followed. There was some due process required. Refer us to the bus, uh, uh, any bus regulation, which says that, oh, before an off-spec product is sold, step one, step two, step three must be followed. Before you see, you cannot, just, you cannot just throw out some of these rhetorics against individuals whose reputation are dear to them. You have a reputation to protect. You will not take kindly to anybody making unfounded allegations against you. So you don't sit here mm. to also say that somebody did not follow due process. What due process were you expecting him to follow? I, I think, now, I think by now you now understand. You now understand that it's a difference of opinion. And that you, you hold an opinion that he disagrees with, Ace, Ace disagrees with, Koku disagrees with. You say, unless there was an ally, they have been doing what they have been doing is wrong. If that um, is if they've been just, aligned. Just one minute, one minute with Ace and Kumar. Yes. Thank you, Ace, for joining us back. Um, I, you see, the law says that you cannot engage in the broad downstream business without a license. Then the law at some point lifts certain licenses. So if that area has not been covered by the license, they mean that you cannot engage in it at all. Mm -hmm. You cannot say that because the licensing scheme didn't specifically respect that area, that it's a free for all. When the preliminary provision bans engagement in that area without the licensing, which is permission, that is the point. And that is why the, the MPO or World of War has read the section to say that under these circumstances, we can license. A and B to do the job. But it is a bit problematic to say that when the law bans activity except the permission, because a specific activity has that or the licensing regime for a specific activity has not been provided, then it becomes a free for all. So That's what I would say to this See um, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, yes. With mm. respect, uh, I'm compelled to disagree with my professor. <laughs> with respect. I'm compelled to disagree with my professor. Because because there is no sanction. If you, are, if you are banned, you are required to apply for a license and you fail to do, what is a sanction? There's nothing like that in the law. And again, why the requirement for an ally to expand or to limit? To me, the express provisions so made. Okay. I think we can move on now. Under the circumstance, mm. right. must be respected, especially okay. when subsequent provisions have line mm. category of licenses. Okay. If there is no set category of license properly so called, right. you cannot. In, that in, is my in, view. In a minute, state. what the minister so did now, does not compromise what originally was he, he was set out I, to do. I do, I do, I do not, I do not see say that such. But let me conclude. Let me conclude. I agree with the broader view that we should put an end to this rampant contamination of our fuel. The minister, I, the minister, says, the minister says, from this time on, you can't purchase if you don't have a, a license. Uh, well, I, I have stated my position of the right. law. I do not intend to go into what the minister has said with okay. respect. I am saying that the general consensus is that we should put an end to the rampant contamination. Well, they I say there's no rampant, no rampant contamination. contamination. Please, please. Then, we have been able to, BOST has come out publicly to mm. tell you that in the past, mm. we have said things happening. Is that not, is that not, is that not what BOST has said? And is the NDC disagreeing with that? They disagree. Please. Because you were there. 
we this is not the first this is not the first this is not the first time that we are we are having contamination contaminated product this is not the first time you were there for eight years and it was happening no. and boss has come out no. with a list of companies that purchased they purchased we, contaminated fuel please so. boss has come out with a list of companies that purchased such products in the past hasn't boss come out with that no. they purchased can you, slop can you can, slop can you can you can you mm. with the greatest respect you when I decide not to interrupt you. Ignore him. Don't, and you move know on. I can ignore do him. that to you. Ignore him. So once I show ignore you him that and respect, conclude. Okay, ignore quiet. him and conclude. No, mm. <laughs> you are a funny guy. So oh. where where you know that this is not the first time a thing like this is happening, and indeed, the position of the minister is that look, let us investigate this matter, deal with it once and for all. You should not down turn round and say that, oh, you suspect for, uh, cover up. Who is being covered up? You made an allegation against an individual that he has done A, B, C, and D. You didn't care about that individual's reputation. Mm. And then you were saying that the man should, should step aside. He should be interdicted. For what? On the very thing you are alleging he's done, that has been found out not to be true? If you want to deal with the broader problem of how say contamination uh, uh, okay in any event did you did you labor to find out whether the boss md had ever took any step when such a thing came to his attention i can tell you on authority that boss as a company instituted an internal inquiry to ascertain what happened and also those individuals who had the the, the role to play mm. in supervising their 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 installation are on interdiction that one, the NDC would not want the public to know. But you go and try to undermine the man, you try to confuse the general public and create the impression that the MD of boss indeed is doing nothing okay. and deliberately got this thing on the market. Okay. And then you continue to shift your positions. What exactly is your issue? You Thank failed you. to tell us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, John is saying, as you read Section 83, of the act, I just read that, EPA and then we act. EPA Act, PC, Public Procurement Act, Public Procurement Act, Authority what, to dispose, the disposal of obsolete <laughs> equipment and mm. all that is mentioned. It the process okay. and the procedure to follow. Read it. Just read it. You have opened it. Read it. The head of procurement entity shall convene a board of survey comprising representatives of departments with unserviceable, obsolete, or surplus stores, plant, and equipment, which shall report on the items and subject to a technical report equipment. condemned. You are he talking said, of equipment. Please, can I make my You are point? talking of equipment. Don't confuse us. You are talking of equipment. The provision no, of that law has to do with equipment. Unserviceable, absolute, or surplus stores. Please, please. Plants. Please, please, don't stop and equipment. Computer, please. He's confused. Equipment he doesn't know what you're talking about. Please, equipment is only one of it. Stop that. Is he, okay. he doesn't know why he's talking about it. He just wants to derail people. What okay. Okay. Just, let's ignore him. Please. Thank you. So, so what, you're saying, what you're saying is that... Did they follow that this process or not? What you're saying is that you're confirming what H said. Yes. That we have had a practice. He's never confirmed. We have had a practice. He did. We have had a practice that breaches the Procurement Act. So? So that long history must be probed. No problem. Thank you. I have no problem with that. Did he breach it or not? Thank it's you. as simple as that. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, uh, <laughs> Dr. Fete, <laughs> uh, having, listened, totally having listened to all of them from a governance standpoint, and I've seen you've made copious notes, you have mm -hmm. all the time to exhaust your, your commentary on this. Thank you very much. Um, I just think that this is not the first time we're seeing <laughs> uh, different arguments about how to fact find and also pursue justice. And I think it's become, it's become the standard operating procedure mm. in our country. And it's very disturbing because I remember the last time I, I was here, there was this issue about was the standard board and a building and inflated price and a press statement from here and a reaction from there. That's right. And, and I think at the end of the day, the public gets confused. I don't think it serves the best interest of justice and of, of the nation that truth must guide us. This is a situation where there was a report, contaminated fuel uh, is being sold. And it's a matter of concern to the public. 
those who use vehicles, those who buy fuel, I'm sure that even generator users, although mm -hmm. <laughs> energy supply has improved and so on and so forth. So the first thing that I thought public entities ought to do is to assuage, you know, that fear that it, does, it doesn't exist, no panic and all that. And then I expected that we would get into the investigations. The question I consistently ask is that, is professional, properly mandated investigation of potentially criminal offenses possible in our country? And who does that? If we want to fact find, where do we go? We've built a system where you don't know which institution to go to because the mandate, as the mandate is so dis diffused that this institution starts investigation probably without the other knowing. Yeah. In this typical case where BNI came out, the minister said, I've set up a committee, MPA issued a report, and who else? And then it tells you clearly there is no coordination here to know where the central mandate is and the direction as to what has to be done. So for us in ordinary people in the public, listening to the law and constantly refer constant references to the law in the various sections and so on is extremely confusing. And it adds, ends up where you do not get any action taken. And I think we've also had a situation in our country where almost every serious crime, offenses of this nature, economic and so on, it's committees that go in to investigate and very little action follows. So for me, the politicization of matters that ought to be dealt with professionally by public service institutions, well mandated, well equipped with and with such clarity to deal with it and let the world know the facts is a huge problem. We do not have that now. And I think at the end of the day, the question I ask is that, will we ever know the truth about this matter? If an institution or a body of people who are independent, have integrity and the competence to investigate and lay out the facts are not out there, are we going to end up in a situation where the findings of such a committee itself will be so disputed that whatever recommendations they put out will not be acted upon because we are divided on this. I do not think that we could check uh, uh, abuse of power or malpractices in office uh, or crimes of any kind when we disagree so much in the public that is investigating instead of professional bodies. And we end up confusing ourselves. But the effect this is happen ha uh, having is that it is continuously eroding public confidence in the institutions. I mean, and it is also encouraging impunity because all that you would see is that create a forum, let disagreements come, nobody's clear on what, the matter is not resolved, we move on to another. Mm. And so we ought to be very careful. What I think we, we should be serious about doing, I really thought that uh, occupied Ghana is and commerce groups uh, questions, the 19 questions are very good, spot on. Mm. I do not understand the haste of BNI mm. to come up with this report and ex exonerations and so on. Okay. Because it is an institution. On that note, you hold on quickly. Let me speak to the MPA's boss, uh, acting. Acting CEO of the MPA, uh, Mr. Hassan Tampuli. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Hello. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Hassan Tampuli. Very good morning to you, and then good morning to your panelists. Good. Um, and thanks for joining us. Um, you, you issued a statement earlier, and you were very clear and categorical that some wrong had been done as far as your laws are concerned. Uh, the next question that Afeo Marking is asking is, so what are the sanctions? Well, thank you very much. <coughs> yes, yeah, so I, I, I've not been able to listen in full into the program. Mm. Yes, because I'm in a new vehicle. Okay. But and, uh, my senior, A. Sankuma, and I also had uh, my senior, um, Alice, uh, a friend of Martin, mm. and then um, my big brother, Kukubako. I think that, uh, just to sum up, what this whole thing is about, <laughs> This thing has been going on. Um, 
under the impression that this product is not supposed to be one that is heavily paid. And that, that for, for me, uh, probably informs the position that the city on the African market and the both management in the past as well as this management. Mm. Now, we have taken the view now, for now, in the position of the law, we believe that of stakeholders should, as much as any other stakeholders should be regulated, should also be regulated. If I all imperative to regulate of stakeholders because of the danger that it poses more than the regular product. So if you pour petrol or diesel in your vehicle, it's not dangerous. That's be regulated. But if you put off the product in your vehicle, the tendency is that it will run down your engine and paralyze the vehicle at once. Mm. So there is a more compelling reason why off product should be regulated. Mm. Now we have been doing so. We have taken the position based on the existing law and the, the regulations as well as the guidelines that we have in existence. Sorry, you so just mentioned. Sorry, sorry, are, sorry to is, sorry to intervene here. You just mentioned regulation. Which regulation are you referring to? Uh, uh, relying on the, the uh, regulations that uh, uh, Mr. Kukuba referred, referred to. to. We have captured in our document. Okay, so you have not passed an LI after the MPA Act. That has not been passed, okay. and I think that also informs the position that has been taken by uh, the Honorable Office of Market. Mm. And, and the law says you should do that long. as well. It may not say. be long because the board management has been relying on that. You understand? Okay. And currently, the board management is also relying on it because it's like a corporation that has been established. Mm. So one mm. can say that the current board management is not wrong because this is something that has been going on and the regulation is very silent on the fact that it should be regulated. Now, here is the thing. We, in addition to regulating of stakeholders, have written to a lot of companies that we believe are trading in the downstream petroleum industry without license. We believe that they should get OTC licenses. I would get that, I think, about two, three months ago. And um, even some uh, storage facilities that we have seen around the Kema area, we do not have licenses. All of them were in the process of replacing and then like, giving them licenses for trade. So this one has happened at a time that we are trying to tidy up the industry practices. And, and, and it just got caught up in the public uh, discussion. But it, it's nothing new as far as our you know, new uh, vision and direction is concerned. We, we, we have to do the right thing. Mm. You understand? If, if, someone, so, if yes. someone engaged in the downstream industry, uh, like you are suggesting, will be in the matter of waste, um, uh, waste products, for example, uh, what will be the sanctions? We normally impose sanction of our 10,000 Ghana cities. Yeah. Now, failure to pay, because if you don't, we can't revoke your license. All we have to do is to impose the sanctions and get you to come and get the license and take you through the normal process of obtaining the license. It is not for us to deny you a license because you have failed in the business without a license before. No, we will exact the sanctions. To take you through. So as we speak, Mugumbina and Zip Oil's license are being processed. I believe the next couple of days should be able to, 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 to process their licenses so that they, they will be able to exercise their constitutional uh, rights to economic. It, uh, it was in the uh, are, they be, are they being fined as well? Say that again. Are they being fined as well to pay money? No, we, 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 that, that is issue we made. Having regard to um, the established processes that we have. So if MPA itself has not clarified mm -hmm. the, the law in the past, and people have relied on the existing practice, I think that going forward, what we have to do is to review the law and bring some to the existing legality so that there isn't any gray areas. Okay. But like I said before, if we regulate petrol and diesel, it's more imperative that will regulate a mixture of petrol and diesel. Okay. Otherwise, uh, there will be some, some, some challenges um, as far as the market space is concerned. All right.
Thank you very much, Asanta Puli. I believe that uh, we have done some clarity to the matter. Useful. Thank you, as always. Uh, Hassan Tampoli is the uh, acting CEO of the National Thank Petroleum you Authority. And I was, I was with you. Just hold on. I was with you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Hold on. Yes. Uh, continue. Because, you see, you are speaking at length. I should allow so, doctors. So, so, yes, thank you. So right. The point you were talking about the BN, BNI intervention the and haste, how you felt you know, that was hasty. Uh, because, because the waters have been muddied. And what we are settled on, in not knowing the facts, what has actually happened, uh, we are now hearing more of cover-up, corruption, mm. and so on. But the facts yeah. are not there. I think we must create a situation where now that we've seen what is happening, um, it is important that, and I agree with uh, what Itankuma said. I think I like the 19 questions. Mm. Um, and I think I'm not sure if this investigation should be done by uh, a ministerial committee or an interministerial committee. I just feel that state institutions must be allowed to do their job. Mm. There is enough information there for an experienced police officer. Um, Ultimately, Parliament can look in, but don't forget that you have a majority-minority situation there as well. And no, I think it, it might end up not any better than it is now. But I think if it's a matter of finding a body that has independent, commands the confidence of the public, and has enough people on it with integrity and experience to do a thorough job and come up with a report that everybody will be, would see as objective, fair, and therefore, the actions that must follow will be acted upon. I think that is what we need. But as it is now, we may end up this being one of several cases, inconclusive, mm. but it creates, it has, it dents the public confidence in the system. So I think that we need to have a more thorough investigation um, and let empower that committee to take decisions. If they feel that at any point an officer, uh, has to step aside or whatever, just like you could has done with the EC and so on. It should be, it should not, I think the politicians rush into matters of this nature too quickly. <laughs> and then they muddy the waters and they confuse everybody. But the effect is that you are encouraging impunity because we never resolve, we never punish crime. And the rule of law is thoroughly and consistently being undermined. So, so this is my view. My view is that um, guided by the 19 questions is Ankoma put forward and, and his team, I think that we should also ask whether the committee, or the ministerial committee can do the job or it must be bring together people, professional investigators, show this from the political gimmicks going or the debates and arguments and let a thorough job be done so that when they put forward their report, it's not only for uh, politicians or the government or the minority to accept the report, the public must have confidence in what has been done and there has to be a deterrence because after all the public could be at the receiving end if anything had gone wrong. So this is, this is what I think really. Thank you very much and the uh, questions that are coming up right after I spoke to um, Hassan Tampuli and questions being asked include that whether or not um, um, Zoop Oil can qualify to get a license and because you say that you, they are in the process of getting license um, they are saying the suggestion is that their facility is a makeshift one and cannot qualify for a license and additionally uh, there is no board at the MPA uh, so those are questions uh, coming up and being asked to read uh, certain portions of your your own law but interesting something you know it looks like this whole law mm. needs to be looked at again um, I'm, 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 um, it's a very lousy yes. law. It appears. And then a very critical question is being asked whether or not BOST should be taking any responsibility for what is going on. It's terrible. Because it does appear that the fact remains that that job that they seem to be taking upon themselves now has been as it were, subcontracted to another entity, some Nigerian entity oh that goodness. is in res responsible and being paid uh, yes. uh, huge sums of money. Some aspect of their work which was outsourced. Which, which is that? Can you explain TSL. to me? TSL. TSL, yeah. yes. Uh, because some aspect it, of the job which was mm. outsourced. And it's normal within any business. Practice. And, and, it's normal. and in what you know, are they the ones supposed to take responsibility for this rather than boss? Which there is are some clauses depending on the extent of it and mm. depending on the extent of culpability, you could hold them responsible. And, and they are paid um, 300,000 uh, uh, every month. Let's do a value for money analysis. As management to fees. Determine whether the money they are being paid is realistic. And they watch for the contamination to happen? 
And the state is paying for that? No, let's let's get into those facts. It was established. That's why we needed to establish those facts. That's why we didn't need to rush into you, all this. You need, this is what we need a body. Yeah. yeah. The, the, and that to name, appoint an independent body that, to that do that. That name, actually, the T, TSL name. Investigators. The TSL okay. name has so come up before. From the American He's saying that you you established that. You set it up. I remember it came up. independent. And the bulk oil distributors were against them. Let me tell you something. They, were, they advise you not to, to, to have them. Getting TSL, and that's why I say that this local contamination is a hoax. The last time we had a contamination was in 2013. Following TSL's intervention, we've never had that level of contamination. That's subject to investigation. See. So I this is we this we is actually their responsibility. So, so, so why is the state not holding them and having them to account for these things? Some yes, briefly, we, we take a break. State yeah. institutions yeah. must no. work. I wanted to clarify. We yes. need intimidating investigation. Not okay. him alone. Thank you. Oh, you have done that. I'm giving you an opportunity. You just asked the question. I wanted to make a point. So quickly, quickly. Just 30 seconds. Let's move on. Just wanted to clarify that the contention of... Uh, Ace and Kuma was in respect of waste processing licenses. That was his contention. You are back to that issue. <laughs> and I just made a point that there is no such express requirement for licensing when you want to deal in waste fuel. Okay. Two, the LI that he talked about is a matter of law. You see, an LI is anchored on a parent act. Yeah. To the extent that this Act 691 does not make reference to that ally that pre-existed. You cannot rely on it mm. for the enforcement uh, to regulate okay. the mandate given you under the... You have said this. Especially you have said this. Oh, no, no. I'm repeating it to... to, to, to but we don't have time. Of, no, no. You gave me 30 <laughs> seconds. I'm doing all that in 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> and it is good legal education for because it is important. You can't say there's an enactment. We say that come out with an ally. Then you, you say there was an ally that uh, pre-existed. There is no such... Uh, enactment in force, wow. but you are relying on it for enforcement. You say that is your interpretation. Okay. You ask questions of sanctions, so we let them pay 10,000. Where is it in the law? Mm. It Thank is you. not. So let's Th act Thank within you. the law Thank to you. avoid confusion. Okay, so you to 30 seconds. No, I just uh, need in addition, your, 30 edu seconds. I Go need ahead. your education. Mm. And I'll read it. And say read what it you say you. and let's move on. Yes. Mm. You see, the uh, requirements for licensing. 11 talks about the fact that you require it. Two mentions the products. Then the three, this, the three says progress. the authority may, uh -huh. by legislative instrument, yes. limit or expand, or expand, expand yes. the <laughs> scope of activity under these two. Yes, that that's the authority, all those categories of licenses. I'm helping you. Make, well, you. You didn't you like it when you were interfering with you. Will help with you. But he didn't stop. Let me you help you. you to stop. <laughs> stop. On this one, stop. This is the key to the security. Must go with three hands. Yes, the, go ahead. The 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 of your 30 seconds is running out. Talking about law, and I need yes. to help you. You see, what the people of Ghana want, and, and that's important. Doctor. They want your sincerity. Can I make my point? They want your this sincerity. This is the crux of the matter, Samson. What the people of Ghana want is not what it's the NDC sincerity. says or what the NTT says. They want reassurance that For the you. fuel they buy is of quality, you that the tax they, they pay. Again. Is being used properly. Okay. That's what the people of Ghana want. Thank and you. And not what the NDC says or what you says. Thank and you. And that should be paramount. Thank you. And not this Thank you. navigation Thank you. and read And, and, and uh, Koku, well, it's only fair. Well, it's only fair. Well, when it comes to the law, I get a bit confused. I just want well, clarification. Well, most of our laws are confusing. <laughs> oh. I'm just, I'm just. The politicians confuse them, I can tell see, you I'm, that. See, I'm just asking. Mm. You are the lawyers. Uh, the, this mm -hmm. public notice number 027. Uh, application for permit to construct and modify lubrication, lubricating oil blending recycling plant for the manufacture of lube, this thing, issued by NPA. Mm -hmm. And then this license, this sample I have here, which comes under section 12. I read it earlier. Yes, you did. So these things have no legal. Effect. They should, because they, they, they are empowered. They, are about they, no, they refer, I they to, refer to... They refer to rules, regulations. They are empowered to issue rules, regulations, and, uh, and even notices, so which this, are binding. Uh -huh. yes. So, so this has legal binding. I think it does. It's it does. supposed to be legally binding. Okay. Look, right. But they don't He's have the regulation. Right. For right. Come you. on, come right. on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. 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 If they have it does. It should. It should. The violation, the man conceded. No, Doc, it's uh, important. Please, can no, no, you no, no, the no, Alex, 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 thank you. They don't have the regulation. Thank you, thank you. Now, that is what the question is. Was the MPA acting, Ely, saying 
you can start this business without a in contaminated <laughs> uh, without a license. Then when the they business. find out, <laughs> you'll find some ten thousand Ghana city, and then they they actively give you a license. Yes. Is that it? Uh, is that what he said? I, th I think that ought to be a proactive way yeah. of dealing oh. with things. Oh. Or you don't think no. so? No, but you've committed. Of, I mean, you don't have a license to operate. He, he so says why are we the regime. Well, no, the law the the regime. Say, it's, it's, it's on the basis that the regime was to the understanding that the practice I think and the, the president was rule. that. I think okay, the thank you, rule. thank you, Doc. Doc, I want you to say this thirty minutes. Uh, it, yes. uh, you uh, answer this thirty minutes and let's go. Okay. Uh, the NDCs claim that this clearly suggests that the Akufuado administration is not committed to fight against corruption. What do you say to that? No, I, I don't think you can come to that mm. conclusion. The, the, the letter, for example, uh, that was written uh, says that I, we voted for change, not sir. impunity. We voted for uh, restoration of honor in government and not uh, dissipation, the public representation and think, all of those things. I think the Kufuado government has been in power for six Just months. Mouth. Yes, mm. but six good months. Well, well, I, they have four four years. I mean, I mean, these are conclusions you have to draw mm. on the basis of. No, on this case, on this case, on this case, what we should do? Yeah, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, on this specific case. I think that uh, on this case, I think Thank the you. important thing is that Thank you. with our voices, we yeah. are also trying to shape mm. the direction they should take to do the right thing. We, we, that pressure must be put on government. Okay. But it shouldn't Thank you. lead to this conclusion. I think it's pretty much it. Thank you. We go, oh, we go for a break. No when we return, I share with you uh, some please. of your messages, and then we proceed to uh, deal with the matters of um, including a tax that we are told will not lead to any price hikes and will not burden you the slightest. And I ask a question, what kind of tax is that? We'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is News File, it's your most authoritative news analysis show. And uh, just uh, running against time uh, so, so, so badly. And uh, we deal very briefly with the questions of the, the VAT uh, flat rate, 3% that's been introduced. And the questions that are arising in the minority is even suggesting that they may go to court over that. Well, these days it appears the minority will go to court on so many issues. <laughs> and... Um, this is uh, Gordon Asari Bediako, just two text messages and we'll move on. He says that, I was at the depot of Zoop Oil, and it's not true that the capacity of their tank is 500,000 liters. Mm -hmm. Indeed, there are three tanks of 500,000 liters each, making it a total of 1.5 uh, million liters. Okay, you meant 5 million, uh, 500,000, right, okay. Thank you uh, very much for that message. And this one also says that the suggestion that, and Ebuache Jacon has been stressing that uh, Mevin Pina, moving Pina, is it, had, was the highest, uh, offered the highest price ever. Offered the highest price ever. The suggestion is that that is untrue. Uh, 1.3, 30 cities, uh, highest bid ever is false because Ewa Dako in April 2015 sold 100,000 liters of slop at 1.5 CDs after the buyer offered two CDs. Okay, so.